Hey everybody, and welcome to part 25 of my um, pre-algebra tutorial. In this part, we're going to be dealing with something I like to call isolation. I'm going to write the word isolation because it's what we're going to be working with, but this time with two variables. Now before, we used to um, simply do isolation with one variable, such as in the following scenario when we had x plus 4, for example, equals 8 and we had to isolate x. What we did was, our rules were to simply remove everything from the same side that was sharing the same side as x, so basically subtract 4, and then we're going to get rid of this, and then x was going to wind up equal to 4. And I told you that when you're doing isolations, the only thing that's going to work is sad map, which is basically the opposite of PEMDAS. But I was kind of wrong in saying so because um, basically sad map worked because we were um, working with one variable equation. So if we followed a set pattern, everything was going to go smoothly. But now that we're dealing with two variables in our equation, it becomes a little bit more flexible what we can do with it in order to treat it as our win because we're not going to find an answer. Let's say let's see, we have, let's see, we're going to have 2x plus 3y equals 7. We're not going to have an answer. We're, we're not going to be able to say, all right, well, uh, y is going to be equal to uh, 3. And if you wonder why, it's because y can also be equal to 4. I mean, you might be thinking, but hey, Phoenix Man, if y has a solution, if y is equal to 3, then x is going to be equal to something, and we figured out the equation. No, actually, if y equals 4, if y equals 4, well, uh, 12, we'd be 2x plus 12 equals 7. And then we just get x equals, um, I don't know, what's 7 minus 12? Uh, negative 5 halves or something. But if y equals 4, then we get uh, 8, 2x plus uh, 12 equals 7 again. Okay, anyways, um, it really depends on your value of y or your value of x for that matter. We could even plug in a value of x and we'd still get some kind of similar answer. So now our situation becomes that we've got to find we've got to put an equation in terms of another variable because we're never going to be able to fully solve for it. We're never going to figure out what x is in our lifetime. And I'm sorry to say that. We're never going to figure out the exact value of x. Never. This equation is never going to happen. But we can. I can tell you what x is in terms of y and constants because there's two variables. So in this part, we're really going to do that. So let's, let's say we had those instructions exactly, actually. I'm going to go for a little bit of text. I'm going to say isol... Oh. I'm going to have to say, um, uh, see here, change the color, isolate, X. Let's, let's change this color, um, okay, that was bad, uh, I'll get used to this, this is a new program, like I said, so we're going to want to get rid of that, and let's say my directions were to isolate X, um, first things first, we're going to want to remove everything from the side of X, we could really, there's infinite things you can do, you can divide things, you can multiply, I could, I'll can multiply by 3, actually, I mean, I'm not going to do it, never mind, I could really multiply both sides by 3, and, you know, it's really infinite amount of things that you can do, uh, but we're going to want to do the things that get us closer to solving for X, so what we're going to do now is we're going to want to subtract 3Y from both sides, and then I get a new... Alright, so now uh, our question becomes, well, this 3y minus 3y is going to cancel out, so that's going to become 0, so we can forget about this. But what happens right here? What we're really asking right now is, what's 7 minus 3y? Well, as we learned um, back a little bit, chapter 5, when we're learning about adding and subtracting monomials, we learned that 7 minus 3y, you, you can't subtract them because they're not, you know, they're not... They're not like terms, so we get that our answer has to be now um, 2x equals, 2x plus 0 rather, but we can just forget about the 0, equals 7 minus 3y. Now you might ask, you, ask me right now, hey, pa, Phoenix man, are we done? And I'm going to ask you one thing. Is x by itself with no other monomials? Well, correct, but is x have a coefficient and degree of 1? Well, the answer to that is no. 
we still have a 2 onto the variable x. So what we're going to want to do right now is just divide both sides by 2. And I might have told you this, but really you can never you can add and subtract um, single things, but you can only multiply entire multiply and divide entire sides. So when we're saying 2x divided by 2, if if there was like something else, like if we divide and divide by 2 right here, we'd have to divide the entire side by 2. So we're going to divide this entire side by 2 right here. Now, um, we're going to get that uh, these two are going to cancel. So our answer, we're going to find an answer to this equation. We're going to have x be our by ourselves. But we got to do a little bit of work right here. Remember, I taught you guys just last chapter how to solve for, um, how, to, how to solve, uh, 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 how, to, how, to, how to solve um, um, equations with, uh, how, how to divide monomials is what I'm thinking of. So, um, a little shortcut is you take the two and you bring it to this side, bring it to all, you, d you distribute the two to all the uh, monomials on each side. So we get seven halves and then we'd get minus three y divided by two. So then we get that our answer is going to be x equals 7 divided by 2 minus 3y divided by 2. Real quickly, I just want to talk about this 3y divided by 2. This, this pops up a lot, and I just wanted to uh, make a statement about it. Um, so let's up. Oh, no, my bad. Didn't mean to do that. Um, uh, so let's say we had, um, what do we have there? 3y divided by 2 is what it was, I believe. So 3y divided by 2 is essentially the same thing as saying 3 halves y. We can basically take the y out and put it and make it multiply by this fraction. And just in case you're wondering, um, let me do one quick one again. Uh, 4x divided by 3, it's the same as saying 4 thirds x. And 4 thirds x is the same as putting the x on the top and making it 4x divided by 3. It's 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 a little bit simpler, and if this works. If this this is this is it comes in handy when you're. I mean, it's basically the logic that goes behind when I taught four um, x divided by two. If you take the x out, it becomes four halves x, which basically in turn becomes two x. So yeah. So basically, we could also write three halves y. Now, let's do another one because you can never really do too many of these. I swear to God, I'm gonna kill someone. I'm not really though. I think that's actually legal to say. <laughs> anyway, so let's say we had a uh, 3x plus 9y equals 20. And let's say I wanted to say I wanted to isolate y now. I'm going to do all my work in yellow. Well, first things first, like I said, we're going to want to move all the constants away. I mean, we can really do infinite things. Actually, yeah, let's, let's do something else. Let's not just follow a uniform pattern. I just want to show you guys that this will work. Um, Let's say first, if you want to make this easier, let's divide everything by three. Let's divide um, both sides by three. Well, that's going to get that this three and this three are going to cancel, which that's the negative uh, positive x and nine divide nine. Well, three x divided by three is one x. Nine y divided by three, um, that'd be three y positive three y. So it'll be x plus three y equals twenty divided by three. And I just wanted to show you guys that this, you can do this this way. So let's subtract by x on both sides. And that's going to get rid of this x. And that's just going to leave us with 3y on this side and negative x on this side. Or rather, let me... Actually, yeah, we'll keep it as negative x. You guys, you guys are comfortable enough with negative numbers. And we'll add... It's going to be plus 20 thirds. Now, are we done yet? That's a good question. No, we are not. Because we still have, remember... The, uh, the y not equal to having a coefficient of 1. So what are we going to have to do in order to get that? We're going to have to divide by 3 on both sides. yippee ki yay So that's going to get this out, and then I'm going to write my final answer in blue. y equals... Um, let's, let's, let's take a look at what's going on over here. Well, let's, let, me, let me circle this and pull it over to the side and do it in a different color. Um, gray seems nice. It'll show up. Yep, it'll show up. Okay. I don't want to get rid of this. So I love about my new software, I can like, I don't have to like botch anything out, I can just get rid of things. So what we're going to have is the 3 be distributed to this side, which is going to get us negative x over 3, negative x over 3. Remember, negative x has a coefficient of 1, so that's like saying negative 1 third x, and then 20 thirds divided by 3. Well, 20 thirds divided by 3, and if you recall from your base from basic math, 
how, how, we, how do we divide fractions like this? Well, we flip the, flip the, um, the second number and we multiply. So we're going to get uh, one third. So this becomes 20 divided by 9. So 20 ninths. And then negative one third x. So we're going to have to write that into your answer. Y equals negative one third x plus 20 ninths. And if you're wondering, I've got my calculator right now, 20 ninths so, um, reduces to 2.22. So, the real, so um, x and y uh, relate in that way. Let's do a slightly more challenged one. I think you guys are starting to get a little bit of the hang of this and how everything ties together and how it was important that we um, took some time and learned different different things before we began this lesson. Let's do um, 3x plus 2y plus 7 equals 3y plus 2x minus 13. And let's say I wanted to isolate and why sleep y? Let's say I wanted to solve for y. Well, first things first, I'm going to want to subtract everything I don't want. And here's a little shorthand. You can really just multiply, uh, subtract two things in one step. Uh, it saves a little bit of time. If you you wonder, if you can wonder why, it'd just be like you know multiplying this. And no, you might as well just do additions and subtractions all in one step. So we're going to subtract by seven again right here, and that's going to leave us with two y on. We have a 2y on just on this side, so we're going to get rid of this, and then this becomes 2y, okay, this cancels out, equals 3y minus x, mm, 13 plus 7, well, 13, negative 13 minus negative 7 is negative 20, so 3, 3y minus x minus 20. Now, real quickly, we can either have the y on this side, or we can have it on this side. Um, I just chose automatically to keep it on the left side. I like keeping things on the left side in general. But if we didn't keep it on the left side, we could have easily been able to um, to to uh, to solve it on the right side. Just we'd have to do a little bit of different kind of work. So now what we're going to want to do is, since we have two y equals three y minus x minus twenty, we want to keep the y's just on one side. So what we're going to want to do now is subtract. 3y from both sides because like I said I'm trying to move all the variable I'm trying to move my y onto the right in theory yes you could very well have it on the on I'm, I'm gonna keep all my y's on the left rather in theory you can have it on the on the right but I want to keep it on the left for the most part so we're gonna want to get rid of this and this becomes zero so we got negative y equals negative x minus 20 now y must have a coefficient of 1. Right now, y has a coefficient of negative 1. So we're basically going to want to divide the entire side by negative 1. And this will cancel this out, which will get us a positive y. And this will become this will become positive because uh, two, two, negative, two negatives become positive. So we get uh, x plus 20 because, you know, x over 1 equals x and 20 over 1 becomes 20. So we got our answer is x equals y plus 20. Um, so yeah, this complicated equation is really just, you know, exemplified by y equals x plus 20. I think I did a pretty good job of explaining um, how to isolate variables with uh, two with um, the two variables. Well, and the next part um, is going to actually be a focus on in which I talk about uh, just talk about isolating variables with more than one equation. But it's important that you kind of understand how this works because this serves as like the basically the foundings and like the extensions of every single like chemistry, biology, sciences, algebra, everything comes back to simply being able to isolate different variables. That is where you become a mathematician. So I'm going to give you one more um, to work with. 2x plus 3y minus 7 equals 9x plus 2y um, minus 3. Yeah, sure, why not? And I want you to isolate I'm writing really quickly. Isolate x and then isolate y and try to see if you can do it. I'm not going to give you the answers because I personally don't feel like taking the time to write it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's that's about it. That's all I got to teach you for part 24. Um, next part, in part 25, we're actually going to have a focus on, on, um, uh, on, isolation with multiple variables. Again, these focus ons, if you don't want to really follow them, you're not obligated to. So if you don't want to see these focus ons, you can simply just move on to the next part and it really doesn't matter. I mean, I won't personally feel anything about it, 
But it's important that if you want to get a full experience of pre-algebra, that you go back and at some point, not, not exactly right now, if you don't watch it right now, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't really hurt you. At some point, you're going to want to go back and re-watch these focus ons because I kind of sometimes take for granted stuff that you've already learned in the focus on. Um, that's about all I have to give you for today. Uh, see you guys in part 25.